Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Sulphur and Sulfuric Acid. Before going into the details of today's lecture, what we will do, we will have a kind of recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we have seen a few basic comparison between uh, inorganic and organic chemical industry. Then we started discussing about the sulphur. Under the topic of sulphur, we started with its pertinent properties, then consumption pattern, then raw materials that are available for its production and then processes for the production of elemental sulphur. We have seen that there are three processes for the production of uh, elemental sulphur. One is the elemental sulphur mining from salt domes, other one is the H2S conversion from natural gas and industrial gases or oxidation and reduction of H2S and third one is from iron pyrites. So, out of these three methods, first two methods we have already discussed in the previous lecture. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss how to produce elemental sulphur from iron pyrites that is what we are going to see now. Elemental sulphur from pyrites, iron pyrites are nothing but ore where uh, predominantly iron disulphide component is present. When you take uh, ore material and then do the thermal dissociation reactions in uh, high temperature furnaces, then several reactions takes place. So, those reactions first we start with under this third method of elemental sulphur production from iron pyrites. Chemical reactions, thermal dissociation FeS2 which is the primary component of uh, iron pyrites that is iron disulphide. If you do the thermal dissociation of this component at high temperature something like 1300 degree centigrade, then you get a disulphur gas which is highly active in general and also you get a iron sulphide which is in the liquid droplet form, right. Then this ore whatever you take in general that is uh, we are getting from the natural resources. So, there may be some carbonaceous materials also or other inorganic minerals may also be present in that one. So, let us say if you take general combustion reaction between C, H, S elements reacting in the presence of oxygen, then what are the possibilities of gases that could be forming? Sulphur dioxide, hydrogen sulphide, carbon monoxide, carboxylic acid, water, carbonyl sulphide, carbon disulphide, etc. These components may form, right? Most of them are in the gases or vapor form, okay? So, now out of this what we are going to see, we are going to see how to recover elemental sulphur S. So, this recovery of sulphur from gases takes place in two stages uh, in this process. One stage is known as the hot stage that is catalytic reaction takes place at high temperature approximately at 600 degree centigrade something like that, okay? So, in this hot stage in the catalytic converter what happens? This SO2 reacts with carbonyl sulphide and then carbon disulphide to give sulphur vapors and then carbon dioxide. This reaction takes place around 600 degree centigrade. Then sulphur recovery from uh, gases will also take place at lower temperature that is known as the cold stage. At this stage what happened? The catalytic conversion of uh, SO2 and then H2S takes place to get water vapor and then sulphur vapors. These sulphur vapors or whatever are there, those things can be condensed uh, using the molten sulphur and then you get the elemental sulphur, required elemental sulphur you can get. So, now this is one of the product that you are going to see and then this is also one of the product because this iron sulphide whatever is there or, or pyrotite whatever it is there, that you can uh, granulate it and then do the roasting of it. So, if you do the roasting of this FES, then it is possible that you can get sulphur dioxide and then iron oxide. This sulphur dioxide, what you can do? You can recover it and then further convert it to the SO3 and then further you can get sulphuric acid, right? So, that means not only elemental sulphur S, but also sulphur dioxide and then this iron oxide whatever is there it can be taken as a basic ore and then sent to the steel uh, industries for the further recovery of iron, etc. In addition to that one, you can see the delta H 
though the thermal dissociation of FeS2 is endothermic reaction. The other important reaction is uh, highly exothermic and then many other reactions you know uh, when this takes place, uh, steam is generated at high pressures and then this steam can be utilized to produce electricity or power. Okay? So, now what we see 1, 2, 3, 4 products are there that you can estimate or that you can get from this process. That is the reason this process or elemental sulphur production from the iron pyrates is very famous in India because not only the sulphur, you also get other 3 products that is SO2 from which you can get the H2SO4 and then Fe2O3 and then you also generate power. Okay? So, quantitative requirements if you see, if you wanted to produce 1 ton of elemental sulphur greater than 99 percent purity, then pyrites ore 4.4 tons required, limestone 0.65 tons required and then fuel oil 0.76 tons required for 1 ton production of uh, elemental sulphur which is very high quantity. So, this is one of the important economic factor. If you can replace fuel oil with uh, other uh, cheaper uh, fuel options like coal etc., it is going to be even economically feasible. It is going to be even economically better option if you can replace fuel oil with other sources like coal etc. or coal or pulverized coke etc. those things if you can use. Water requirement 25 tons, electricity 1800 kilowatt hour. Right? In the reactions we have already seen that there are some byproducts or co-products are there. So, these co-products are SO2 and then Fe2O3 from FES roasting pyrotite roasting in fluidized bed uh, roasters. Okay? So, how much SO2 you get? 1.2 tons and then how much Fe2O3 you get? 2.8 tons. We have also discussed that lot of steam is produced at high pressure. So, that steam can be utilized to produce electricity. How much you can produce? 3200 kilowatt hour total electricity you can produce, but you are utilizing only 1800 kilowatt hour in this process. So, 1400 kilowatt hour net electricity that is being produced in this process. Okay? So, plant capacity is in general 250 tons per day as elemental sulphur production. Now, we see the process by a flow sheet here that is shown here. Okay? So, the iron pyrites whatever required for this process to get elemental sulphur they should be dry enough. If they are not dry enough, then what happened whatever the moisture is there in the ores that may be uh, interfering with the important reaction because we have seen under the chemical reaction section so many reactions are there. So, it is very essential to make the ore dry enough. So, if it is not dry enough what you can do? You can use the flue gases in rotnickel and then dry them. After drying them you can size reduce them to approximately 200 mesh size. Right? Then, uh, what we have? We have a smelter, a furnace right, in which different operations are taking place. At the top of the uh, smelter what we are having? We are having oil burners. right? To this oil burners fuel oil and then air is uh, supplied. When the fuel oil is combusted using the air, so many combustion gases are forming here. Okay? So, these combustion gases would be very useful uh, for the FES to thermal dissociation. Right? So, uh, once we have these combustion gases and then ore inside the smelter, so then what you can do? You uh, introduce size reduced FES2 to this process. Then thermal dissociation of uh, FES2 will take place and then gases would be released and then these gases would be at approximately 1300 degree centigrade because at that temperature reaction is taking place and then at the same temperature gases are coming out. So, when FES2 is dissociating what we have seen? We have seen FES or pyrotite uh, liquid droplets are also forming. These droplets should be condensed at the bottom or uh, these droplets should be collected at the bottom right? in a liquid form. Let us say if the ore is having uh, silica also, in general ores definitely would be having silica whatever the purification level you do. So, then those silica may also be a kind of interfering subsequent reactions for the production of elemental sulphur or sulphur dioxide. So, that should also be washed out or fluxed out. For that purpose, we use the limestone or lime solutions here to flush out the silica from here. 
right. So, because this silica is uh, you know settling on the top of this molten FES. So, then flushing out this uh, silica using the limestone is not a difficult task, right. So, once this uh, silica has been flushed out, so whatever molten FES is there that is collected from the collectors and then sent to a granulator where it is being granulated to approximately 4 mm size and then it is stored or shipped to H2SO4 plant as per the requirement. Otherwise, whatever these granules of FES are there, they can be taken to a fluidized roaster where roasting of FES takes place to get SO2 and then Fe2O3, right. So, this reaction occurs at very high temperature approximately at 1000 degrees centigrade. So, the gases coming out from the fluidized bed roaster uh, roasting FES uh, will be having temperature 1000 degrees centigrade. So, these hot gases what they will be done next? They will be taken to a high pressure heat recovery boilers where heat would be recovered and then they will be reduced to temperature something like 150 or 200 degrees centigrade something like that. So, when the temperature is reduced so much, so what happens? Steam at high pressure would be released and then that steam may be collected and sent to turbo generator for the electricity generation. After cooling the gases, if at all gases are having traces of Fe2O3 or unreacted FES etc., they would be separated in cyclone separator followed by electrostatic precipitator and then almost pure sulfur dioxide whatever is there that is collected and then sent to H2SO4 plant. This SO2 would be further oxidized to SO3 and then this SO3 when you dissolve in water you get H2SO4. So, in the production of sulfuric acid lecture we are going to see these details anyway in the subsequent lectures, okay. So, whatever Fe2O3 that is present in the gases they will be separated out from the cyclone separator and then electrostatic precipitator and then collected as Fe2O3 and then that is sent as iron ore to steel plants. So, this is another product, okay. Now, whatever the gases coming out from this melter they are at high temperature of 1300 degrees centigrade those gases will also be taken to high pressure heat recovery boiler. where the temperature is reduced to 300 degree centigrade. So, when the temperature is reduced uh, from uh, 1300 degree centigrade to 300 degree centigrade, so lot of steam is generated that would be approximately at 70 atmospheric pressures and then that can also be taken to turbo generator for electricity production, right. So, cooled gases which are at 300 degree centigrade, they would be further sent to electrostatic precipitator to check if any droplets of FES or dust of FES is present in the gases, if at all there. So, those would be separated out in the electrostatic precipitator and then those droplets or dust of FES is mixed with the molten sulphur and then further granulation is done, okay. These cooled gases which are at 300 degree centigrade then sent to a hot stage or hot reactor where catalytic reactions take place at 600 degree centigrade. Here uh, most of the SO2 react with the COS and then CS2 to get the S6 and then carbon dioxide, okay. So, if at all some H2S or uh, SO2 are still un unreacted, they will be reacted into a separate reactor which is cold stage reactor or cold catalytic reactor which occurs at approximately 200 degrees centigrade, right. Before sending the gases of hot reactor to the cold reactor, those gases again cooled in a low pressure heat recovery boiler and then here again the steam approximately 45 atmospheres generated that can also be taken for the electricity production, right. So, now after cooling these gases from the hot stage, they will be at approximately 150 degree centigrade and then these gases are sent further taken in a cold stage catalytic reactor where a reaction occurs at approximately 200 degree centigrade where SO2 and then H2S reacts to give water and then uh, sulphur vapor. The sulphur vapor uh, now would be at 200 degree centigrade, they will be taken to a condenser where molten sulphur drops are sprayed from the top in order to condense the sulphur vapor, right. If at all some uncondensed sulphur vapors are there 
or if unreacted SO2 or other gases are there, in order to remove them, these gases would be further taken to wash tower, these exit gases taken to the wash tower where water is sprayed from the top so that if any sulphur is there that would be collected from the bottom and then waste are separated out whereas the stake gases which are having permissible limits of uh, SO2 etc. they can be sent to the atmosphere, right. See the molten sulphur that you collected from this process after the condenser and then after the wash tower, you know that may be having some impurities like arsenic or it may be having some chlorides or it may be having some chlorides etc. Having this component is not good for the subsequent uh, use of uh, you know this S because this S elemental sulphur whatever is there 90 percent of it is being used for a uh, H2SO4 production only that is what we have seen in the previous lecture, right. So, this S would be converted to the uh, SO2 and then this SO2 will be further oxidized to give SO3 which is a reversible reaction it occurs using some catalyst V2O5 or platinum or uh, iron oxide these kind of catalysts are there, right. So, when you do these uh, catalytic reactions later stage if the sulphur is having this arsenic or something these kind of components they will be present to, along with the SO2 gases also and then this when SO2 is being oxidized using the catalyst to SO3 these impurities may be deactivating this catalyst etc. So, that is the reason it is very essential to remove this arsenic components etc. that can be done by taking them in a continuous autoclave in which calcium hydroxide solution is present. So, after this dearsenator you can remove arsenic and other kind of wastes and then get almost pure sulphur to shipping. This is the entire process that is happening in the case of elemental sulphur production from the iron pyrates. So, now you can see here uh, elemental sulphur is one product and then uh, sulphur dioxide is second product, third product is iron oxide and then fourth product is electricity, okay. Now, whatever we have seen in the flow sheet the same thing is presented as a notes here. Uh, the process description, flue gases are used to dry the pyrates ore in the rotor nickel and then size reduced to 200 mesh size. This size reduced ore is introduced into a vertical circular shaft furnace which is smelter. Oil burners are located at the top of the smelter to which fuel oil and then air are supplied. Hot combustion gases of oil burners are used for dispersing size reduced ore in the furnace. To this suspension of ore and combustion gases inside the furnace introduce FES2 from the top which moves downward in the suspension. Then thermal dissociation of this iron disulphide takes place at 1300 degree centigrade and then give disulphur gases which is highly active and then ferrotoid that is iron sulphide uh, liquid droplets, okay. So, purpose of FES2 is also to receive heat of dissociation and fusion not only production of these two component. Liquid droplets of FES are caught in the molten horizontal batch which is called as collector and if any silica is present that is trapped and fluxed with lime which is uh, floating on the top of molten FES matter. This silica is floating on the top of molten FES. Liquid FES is trapped periodically and granulated in water to produce approximately 4 mm grains for further roasting operations in fluidized bed reactors. At the bottom of vertical shot furnace gases change 90 degrees and move horizontally. Very hot gases which are at 1300 degree centigrade move through a high pressure heat recovery boiler section and get cooled to 300 degree centigrade. If any dust of FES is uh, there that would be separated by the electrostatic precipitator unit and transferred to the molten FES section. Cooled gases to uh, 300 degree centigrade sent to high temperature catalytic reactor where carbon compounds with S are eliminated. Reaction gases if at all still containing SO2 and H2S are cooled to 150 degree centigrade by passing through a low pressure heat recovery boiler. This followed by cold stage catalytic reaction which occurs at approximately 200 degree centigrade where aluminum oxide catalyzes H2S and then SO2 reaction to produce sulphur vapor and water vapor. 
After catalysis, sulfur gas is condensed on molten sulfur droplets in a spray condenser and then heat of fusion is recovered via low pressure steam boilers. Then exit gases are next washed with water in another tower to further recover entrained and uncondensed sulfur. Sulfur usually contains arsenic which attacks the vanadium or platinum catalyst in SO2 giving rise to SO3 in contact process for H2S production. This we are going to see in subsequent lectures. It can be removed by contacting molten sulfur with milk of lime in a continuous autoclave. Sulfur as SO2 for H2SO4 can be obtained by roasting the granulated FES from smelting furnace. Fluidized roasting at 1000 degrees centigrade produces sulfur dioxide which is cooled in a waste heat boiler followed by cleaning in cyclones and then electrostatic precipitators. Hot cinders of iron oxide suitable for blast furnace center cake are cooled on conveyors and shipped to steel plants. This is about the process. Now we see if at all any engineering problems. What are the problems? You know they are very essential from engineering point of view to consider. So major engineering problems, pirates or beneficiation. Ores in general include so many kind of impurities, dust, mud, etc. Not only that one, other uh, metallic, uh, ferrous, non-ferrous uh, ingredients may also be present in our other inorganic may also be present. So, so many purifications uh, steps are done using different types of mechanical unit operation and then almost pure, uh, almost uh, clean enough ore is used in a smelter process. Right? So, but this process whatever we discuss that is developed for the uh, process uh, where ore is having only uh, 1.5 percent silica. But Indian ore has in general 5 to 7 percent silica. So, then you know this removal is very essential. Thus, it requires either flotation or extra limestone to flux out silica. But however, if you use the flotation then what happened? They, it has been found that approximately 30 percent of uh, loss of ore is there if you use the flotation. So, that is the reason it is better to go for extra limestone solution to flux out the silica which is floating on the surface of molten FES. Okay? Then grinding, whatever the size reduced FES2 that is the 200 mesh size that is based on the economic balance between heat transfer rate from combustion gases plus residence time. Right? So, this size is you know that much important, right? It is because of this balance, right? Why it is so much important? In general, fall of particles or the settling velocity of the particles, tower height, and then grinding cost, etc., dictate the economy. Okay. Then substitution of coal for fuel oil. Fuel oil is very expensive. Actually, we have seen in quantitative requirement section what we have seen. If you want to produce one ton of elemental sulfur you need 0.76 tons of fuel oil which is very high large quantity right and then these fuel oils are expensive in general especially in india they are available in uh, limited locations like uh, asmo site but at, at high cost right so that also low grade fuel oil low grade fuel oil itself is available only at one site and that also at high cost so then it is better to use coal rather than using the fuel oil and then it has been found in place of fuel oil if you use coal there is a 20 percent saving in the cost of sulfur production. So obviously it is better to use coal and then some research is going on I hope hopefully it must be available now. Gases reaction in the smelting furnace, complete combustion of fuel without excess air is desirable to avoid H2S to SO2 ratio because this ratio if it is not maintained properly what happen? The uh, reaction at hot stage and then cold stage whatever the degree of reaction conversion to take place that may not take place. Okay? This can be shifted with only minor changes in the oxygen and then fuel ratio. Smelter feed system requires close instrumental control because of the specified uh, settling velocity of the 200 mesh size etc. those things. Then two stage catalytic reactor is designed. Actually initially uh, single stage catalytic uh, reactor was designed where it was uh, assumed that COS and then CS2 will remain unconverted to free sulphur. But however later on 
high temperature catalyst uh, utilization found that these can also be oxidized and then sulfur yield would be increasing to 85 to 92 percent. So, otherwise initial plants whatever having they were having only cold stage operations using aluminum oxide catalyst. Okay? Later on this high temperature catalytic converter has been found because of which conversion or the yield of sulfur has increased up to 92 percent. The design of cold stage is similar to the so called oxidation reduction of H2S process that we have discussed in the previous lecture. Heat recovery and generation of electric energy. We have seen that you know 1400 kilowatt hour of net electricity is generated in this one. So, that is very much essential to pay attention to uh, collection of steam and then sending to the turbo generators. Despite initial endothermic uh, smelting step and high electric energy usage for grinding, because grinding we understand operating grinding equipment consumes lot of power rather than you know. Let us say if you give 100 kilowatt hour of power for a grinding operation, so that ore is reduced to 200 mesh size. Out of that 100 kilowatt hour approximately 70, 80 or even more kilowatt hours of power is utilized for the operation of the grinding equipment itself. So, these grinding equipments are very inefficient uh, in terms of the power requirements. Right? So, you know lot of electrical energy is utilized for grinding as well. Despite of that one overall process has excess of heat energy and that must be properly collected for the electricity production. This is converted to electric energy via three stages of steam boiler heat recovery with a net production of 1400 kilowatt hour per ton of elemental sulphur produced. So, this is all about the sulphur production. In this lecture we have seen one process, in the previous lecture we have seen two other processes. Now what we are going to see? We are going to see production of sulfuric acid. Before going into the production details of sulfuric acid, we see a few basics, uh, utilization, consumption pattern, different grades of sulfuric acid, etc. In general, sulfuric acid is considered as barometer of India's industrial growth initially and then by early 1990s, India's production of sulfuric acid is almost on par with the uh, what USA was producing. However, per capita consumption of it in India was only 4 percent compared to that of USA. Basic raw material for production of sulfuric acid is sulfur. Okay? This sulfur would be converted to the sulfur dioxide and then sulfur dioxide would be further converted to the sulfur trioxide and then from the sulfur trioxide you get H2SO4. Okay? Not only from elemental sulfur, but it can also be produced from different other sources because the sulfur is ultimately being converted to the SO2. What if, if this SO2 itself we are getting from other sources? Like previous just now we have seen elemental sulfur production from iron pyrites, there also we produced SO2 that can be utilized for H2SO4 production. Right? And in previous lecture we have seen elemental sulphur from H2S. H2S is impurity in many of the fuel gases etc., petroleum refinery gases etc. Right? In those production processes of fuel gases or in refinery gases whatever H2S is there as impurity that can be dissolved in uh, solutions like ethanol amine and then that dilute solution you further heat it uh, at high temperature to liberate uh, pure H2S. This H2S can be oxidized and then reduced in order to get the sulphur, elemental sulphur. This we have seen in the previous lecture. In this process also we have seen SO2 is being produced. So, why cannot we utilize this one? So, like in the just previous slide we have seen elemental sulphur from iron pyrites, their smelting has been done. Similar smelting of uh, Zn, copper, etc., zinc, copper, etc. may also be taking place and then there also this SO2 is being uh, produced. So, we can use that SO2 also for production of H2SO4. Like that there are different sources are there for the uh, production of uh, H2SO4, those we are going to see now here. One is the pyrites or sulphides of iron that we have just seen and then H2S recovered from sour gas and petroleum or waste gases from burning of fuel and then smelting operations such as pyrates of copper, iron, zinc and lead. In India it is primarily produced from elemental sulphur, pyrates and then sulphides only. Okay? If it is produced 
by burning of fuel and then smelting operations then this sulfuric acid is known as the byproduct sulfuric acid okay in fact in one of the uh, previous lecture where h2s is oxidized and reduced uh, to get the elements of sulfur in that process where uh, we have seen you know one of the plant is producing so much of large amount of h2so4 they constructed two sites for h2s production that is what we have seen that much of h2so4 is in general produced as a co-product or byproduct in some processes so such h2so4 directly you are getting that is known as the byproduct sulfuric acid which would be at moderately high concentration not very high concentration maybe 60% 65% h2so4 like that pertinent properties of sulfuric acid if you see different grades or different degrees or uh, different concentration of h2so4 are available in the market for different applications right so these properties what we do we see for pure 100% h2so4 first molecular weight 98.08 melting point 10.5 degree centigrade boiling point or decomposition temperature is 340 degree centigrade solubility completely soluble in water but with large heat of solution evaluation lot of heat is being evaluated while h2so4 is dissolved in water so that's the reason when you make dilute h2so4 solution you take water and then drop by a dripper drop by drop you add h2so4 to the water and then dilute it because lot of heat is evolved so you cannot add water to the h2so4 to make it dilute such large amount of uh, heat of solution is liberated when you dilute the h2so4 other thing that so3 soluble in h2so4 to give varying percentage of oleum actually if you uh, mix a dissolve so3 in h2so4 whatever the product is coming that is called as oleum and then different degrees or grades of oleum are available like 20% oleum 40% oleum etc 20% oleum in the sense if you have 100 kg of uh, oleum out of which you will be having 20 kg of uh, so3 and then 80 kg of h2so4 okay so like that 40% whatever the required uh, percentage oleum you can prepare if you wanted to produce very high percent of uh, oleum like uh, 63 65% something like that what you do you take this 20% oleum and do the distillation to get high percentage oleums that is more economically better rather than producing by dissolving so3 in h2so4 it is strong dibasic acid which is containing two potential protons to donate and then it is also a very good oxidizing and dehydrating agent for many organic components not only many organic components but also many inorganic uh, chemical reactions like nitration sulfation etc some organic reaction like esterification etc when takes place water vapor is produced and then that water vapor has to be separated out so then if you wanted to absorb that water formed in such kind of reactions then also this dehydrating agent h2so4 can be utilized its solution can be concentrated to about 93% by weight of h2so4 its stronger acids can be made by dissolving so3 in 98 to 99% acid sulfuric acid it forms many hydrates that have different melting points this hydrates that you know we have uh 63% h2so4 90% h2so4 98% h2so4 when you dissolve in water and then make 100% uh, monohydrate h2so4 then their uh, you know melting points are different that's because of the these hydrates these hydrates are the reason for irregularities in acid strength and corresponding specific gravities and freezing points in general it is generally sold in the form of various solutions of sulfuric acid in water are solutions of so3 in h2so4 solution of so3 in h2so4 is called oleum 20% oleum means in 100 kg you have uh, 20 kg of so3 and then 80 kg of h2so4 if you dilute it with water to make 100% monohydrate sulfuric acid then it would furnish 104 kg of total weight 
Conventionally, its solutions in water obtained by chamber process actually for the production of uh, H2SO4 two main processes are there chamber process and then contact process. Chamber process is one of the oldest process right or conventional process. In production of uh, H2SO4 by using this chamber process the percentage of acid has to be monitored continuously and then you cannot do the titration etc. in a to find out the strength of acid uh, periodically in the plant. So, then for that reason you know specific gravity of the acid is periodically measured and then uh, you know accordingly acid strength is defined. The specific gravity or Baume degrees are often utilized or used as a kind of reference to measure the degree of uh, or the strength of the acid. Okay, how it is done? You know, initially you take different uh, acids prepared and then you make a acid uh, concentration versus Baume degree and then you make a chart, right? So, for a given Baume degree, what is the corresponding acid strength you can easily find out. This is how it is. Uh, measured in the plant without any interruption or stopping the production. Okay. For sulfuric acid the usual temperature to which specific gravity or Baume degrees are referred is 15 degree centigrade. Some people measure it at 15 degree centigrade, some people also measure it at 18 degree centigrade. But however, modern plants electrical conductance, refractive index and sonic transmittance are also being used to measure continuously the acid strength how much it is. Okay? Now, grades of sulfuric acid if you see each grade of acid having certain percent of H2SO4 and then uh, what is corresponding specific gravity at 18 degree centigrade that we are having now. Okay? Let us say if you have 50 Baume degrees sulfuric acid then that is also known as the fertilizer acid which is utilized for this fertilizer production. It is having 62.2 percent of uh, sulfuric acid specific gravity is 1.525. 60 Baume degree sulfuric acid whatever is there that is known as the oil of vitriol which is having 93.2 percent of H2SO4 and then specific gravity 1.833. Like that 95 percent acid that means H2SO4 is 95 percent and then 98 percent acid means it is having 98 percent H2SO4 and then monohydrate acid H2SO4 means 100 percent H2SO4. And then as you can see as these degrees increasing or the concentration or the acid strength is increasing the specific gravity is increasing at a fixed temperature. Right? If you have 20 percent uh, oleum fuming then that means it is having 20 percent free SO3 in that one and then it is making overall 104.5 kgs. Specific gravity is 1.924 like that 40 percent and then 65 percent oleum etc. also the properties provided here. Now, we see methods of production of sulfuric acid. So, classification of methods if you see there are two methods one is the contact process another one is the chamber process. Chamber process is the old process contact process is newer process or almost all the modern plants are based on the contact process methodology. right? This contact process is based on SO2 sulfur dioxide that is feed material is not elemental sulfur but sulfur dioxide directly you are using as a feed. And then it produce or it yields acid of strength up to 98 percent or even more H2SO4 such high yields are produced in this process. Chamber process it is also based on the sulfur dioxide however it yields acid of concentration less than 80 percent H2SO4. Okay. In the next lecture we will be discussing details of uh, contact processes for the production of sulfuric acid. References for today's lecture are provided here. However, most of the details can be found from these two reference books that is Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden and Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Steve. Thank you.